Greetings and welcome to A Tale in the Desert. My name is Tobal. This tutorial video is designed for any players who are brand new to A Tale in the Desert and want to know how to control their character, uh, kind of get the basics of the game, and quickly move through the tutorial island over to Egypt proper. Before I get too far into the game, if you launch everything up and you notice that your chat box is too small or too large, you can click and drag the top of the box to resize it just to let you know in case that happens to be taking up all of your screen. Now, the tabs across the top have different chat channels and information areas. So system shows you game messages, for example, and passage to Egypt contains other people or other players who are there on the island with you. So you can chat with them and ask them any questions. Now, before I get started too farther into the game, I want to show you the game map. Now you can access this by pressing F3 on your keyboard. It can be moved by dragging the top of the window and be uh, expanded by clicking the bottom right hand side and then dragging around. You can also use the plus and minus key in the upper left hand corner as you can see to zoom in and zoom out. Now we're at this red uh, dot there in the south. If you look up to where that blue lake is just above the red arrow, that is actually the lake here in the distance. So to give you a sense of scale of uh, the red dot versus where that lake is, that's about the distance there. So you can see that lake in the distance and uh, you can tell how far away we are on the map. In order to move around Egypt, all you have to do is left click somewhere on the ground. Now you can either left click multiple times or give yourself one long run command by just left clicking out in the distance. Now your character will try to do a straight line shot until they run into the an obstruction or they get to the objective. So for example, if we try to run across this lake, you'll see that we have a message about the water being too deep. So just keep in mind, you can't run up steep cliffs and you can't run straight into deep water. I'd like to recommend that you explore the options menu up here in the right hand corner. Now, there is a, a specific option I'd recommend you set. It is going to transfer any pop-up messages to that little chat window down in the bottom right hand corner. And it's under options, interface, and then use the chat window for messages. So you'll see sort of, for example, if something would normally pop up in its own box and you would have to click OK, this will change it to send to that window in the bottom right. As you can see, I'm also changing the size of the interface as well. Lots of different options there you can mess with. I'd also recommend you explore some of the audio settings as well as anything else that might kind of suit your fancy to customize your experience to however you would like it. Tail in the Desert also has lots of different cameras available for you, so you're already in one camera mode by default. If you go to Options and Camera, you'll see a lot of different presets. You can either click those boxes directly or use the shortcut on your keyboard. Now, some of these cameras are very useful for doing things that are, say, really close to your feet, like planting crops or kind of finely positioning different buildings, or there's also traveler's cameras that let you see a great distance away. So for example, F7 is kind of a camera that I use when I'm traveling long distances because the angle is set farther back and you can see quite a bit of distance there. Also be aware some buttons, if you press them twice, will give you an alternate view of the same style. So pressing F8 twice, I believe, will give you kind of the side view and then an overhead view directly. We're on the island now. We're ready to dive into our first couple of tasks. Now we can click this task button in the upper left hand corner to show you kind of what you need to do to get into the game. I'd also recommend clicking on that backpack icon, which lets you see your inventory. You can resize it by dragging the edges of the box, but the inventory is going to be useful so you can keep an eye on how much of a certain item you have in your backpack. So our first objective is uh, to gather some slate, as you can see there in the bottom left-hand corner. Now, in order to gather slate, we, all you need to do is run around the edge of any body of water. Uh, if you notice at the bottom of the screen, there's a little chisel and hammer icon. That icon will kind of come, uh, it'll highlight, it'll turn white or gray as you go over a section of ground that contains slate. Now, it's a little bit tricky at first to, to kind of get that slate. You'll have to stop your character, and you can do that by right-clicking. You might have to run backwards a couple feet in order to get the exact sweet spot to be able to pick up that slate. All right, so we know how to pick up the slate. I would recommend you grab about 30 to 40 slate in your first go-through. So just keep running along a coastline or run around a pond, and every time you see that slate icon highlight, just right-click to stop your character. You might have to move backwards a step and then click the button. Now, uh, you might also discover kind of this load or mother load uh, spot where you get more than just one slate. You might get 10 at a time, so it should speed up your progress. But I'd like you to have enough slate 
in order to do the next objective, but also to have some leftover stuff for the future. And I will give you some advanced tips to help you speed through the tutorial a little bit faster than normal. All right, as you can see, I've got more than 40 slate in my inventory, and I've completed that first task in the bottom left-hand corner. Now, the next task tells us to use the skills menu. We can click on our character and then skills to open that up. But before we click anything else, notice the pin icon on the right side here. That lets you pin a box open and keep it open while you're clicking around. It also will prevent the box from closing if you try to do an action inside. So if we try to nap a stone blade, normally that box would disappear once we make one. But because it's pinned, it's going to let us kind of re keep clicking that button. So I'm gonna recommend you go probably all the way down to keep about 10 slate. Just keep making those blades and you'll wanna keep about 10 slate in your backpack. That's going to be important for when we try to build a wood plane, which is coming up next. Uh, once you're finished getting the, the stone blades you need, just uncheck that box on the right side. Now that we have our stone blades created, you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner in the task area that we now have new tasks to complete. Now, I'm going to recommend uh, something for you. If you're here on day one, and you're, you're or, or you know, the first couple of days, this welcoming island will probably be very, very busy. So it might be easier or harder for you to gather wood depending on your situation. Now overall, you're probably going to want about 280 wood or so. That's going to get you through most of everything in this tutorial area. You can get it all at once, but it's more of a personal preference. We're also going to need about 170 grass, by the way. Uh, the grass, you can see that icon on the bottom of the screen. You can just click on the grass anytime you're in a grassy area to pick up one kind of unit of grass. Now we're going to, you can either do that all at once or as you're running around for wood, what, you know, every few steps, why don't you stop and grab a bit of grass? Just keep in mind that we're trying to gather everything for some of our long-term projects in the future. So depending on who's around you, it may make more sense to just do a big circuit among the trees. This will also let you explore a bit, get used to the map. Uh, feel free to click on things that whatever you'd like. Now, when you're gathering wood, all you have to do is click on a tree and you'll have the option to gather wood. And the game will gather all of the wood from the trees in your surrounding area. So sometimes you get one per tree. Uh, sometimes you get lucky and find a ton of wood, like 30 or 40 wood in one batch. Right, so as we're running along to get a bunch of wood, let's take a look at some of these other buttons. Now, the achievement button up there at the top on the uh, trophy icon is going to show you some of the different achievements available in A Tale in the Desert, and you can get more information about achievements by interacting with other players throughout the game. The talent window opens up your, it's kind of like a mix of attributes and your also, I believe, your specialties. Now, talent points are relatively new in terms of specializations, and we'll talk about specializations in another video, but there are specializations like an architect or a laborer that give you different stat bonuses. And the stats in this game do have an effect on how your character performs certain roles. If you meet someone and you'd like to add them to your friends list, just click on the little friends icon there and click the plus button and type their name. So if I type in Augur, for example, it'll add them to the list and then you can click on the name itself in order to get more information about the player. It also tells you when they're online and you'll get a message about it, I believe, in the main chat window. You can even add your own custom note on the top tab. If you wanna say, for example, you happened to borrow something or traded something, but you didn't have the item you needed, you can leave yourself a little note that says, hey, um, I need to remember to give this person a bunch of charcoal, for example. So just click the add note button. And you can add a little custom note um, as you see fit. I have all the wood I need now. If you'll notice, the next task says to build a wood plane. So we're going to click on our character and select project and then build a wood plane. You'll notice the box in the upper left appear. Now, this is kind of a movement box. It tells you where your building is or your item will be placed once you hit that build button. So it's all relative to the angle you're facing. You can either move the camera or move the item in small increments or you can move it in larger increments. Right, so our first building is down. If you notice in the bottom right-hand corner, a very important message is there that says your buildings will vanish after a few days on the welcoming, uh, the welcoming island if you don't log in. So keep that in mind. If you're unable to play through in one go, you do want to try to at least log in once a day in order to make sure your items don't get deleted. All right, we've placed our second wood plane, and now you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, build a wood plane out of slate and stone, blade is done. So now we're gonna try to plane wood to form some boards. To do that, we can click on the wood plane, 
and either press the button or if you notice that letter P, the P is a shortcut for planing wood into boards. So you can just hold the P key on your keyboard and move your mouse back and forth between the wood planes or kind of hover your mouse one at a time and just tap P if you'd like. You will get a message in the bottom right hand corner about your wood planes blade breaking but we'll cover that here in just a moment. If you notice that you're trying to hold P down and all you're getting is a bunch of P's in the bottom right hand corner in the chat box, that's an option that you might have to adjust under your options and chat related. And it might be keep typing in chat after sending a message. So this is uh, basically when you press enter and you send a message to someone, it locks your chat box. And in order to unlock it, you have to press enter again. So if you're trying to do your shortcut for planing a wood plane into boards and you're just seeing a bunch of letters pop up, adjust that. But our wood plane's blade has broke. So what we need to do is replace the blade by clicking on the wood plane and using some of those spare slate blades that we have in our inventory by doing repair the wood plane by replacing the blade. So you'll normally get anywhere from, I mean, sometimes it's only five pieces of wood processed or sometimes it'll be upwards of 15 so it just kind of depends also be aware you can always adjust your camera if you prefer a different angle all right so i would recommend you process about half of the wood in your inventory so we're going to go ahead and keep going until we have about half of our wood processed into boards all right so we have just over half of our wood processed into boards now this is i'm kind of giving you some suggestions that are going to get us through most of the tutorial so i'm trying to save you a bit of time of course if you're more comfortable just getting the wood as you need it that's absolutely fine don't feel bad about mixing it up if you want to get grass at the same time if you want to explore that's completely up to you if you always follow the options or the requirements in the task menu you'll always stay on track all right so i'm going to start gathering all of the grass i need and normally what i do here is just put up a video on youtube and uh, move my character back and forth while pressing one now if you try to gather grass in the same place that you just gathered grass you'll see that pop-up that says this area has been picked clean which means you have to move a couple of feet away all right we're going to keep on going until we have 170 or so grass in our inventory all right so i've got all the grass i need you'll notice in the bottom left hand corner the next task says to drop the grass on the ground to dry into straw. What we'll want to do is click on our character and drop the grass. However, I will give you a caveat. The larger the stack of grass, the longer it's going to take to dry. Also keep in mind that when you put something on the ground, anyone can walk by and pick it up. Now, a tail in the desert isn't known for a ton of griefers. However, the occasional griefer will come by or the character uh, or player who's just brand new and doesn't realize what's going on. So, I would recommend number one splitting your stacks of grass into about 25 or so to dry and also just stay nearby keep an eye on it make sure no one's going to come through and pick up all your stuff it's it's you know it's your own hard work that you've put a bunch of time into so make sure you keep an eye on it there are ways to protect yourself against some griefing tactics later on in the game not too far off to be honest either so don't feel like you're always going to have to be on guard really the community i would say is a very impressive community it's very closely knit and you'll, uh, you'll probably get more positives from the community than any negatives. So we're going to let this grass dry for a while. It is just about as exciting as you would think it would be. Now during this time, if you wanted, you could also be doing a run for wood. You also could be going around chatting with people or just watching something on YouTube, whatever you'd like to do. So some people like to do it all at once. Some people like to split it up and do their tasks in different orders. So whatever you feel comfortable with. You're, you'll notice that your grass icon will change to a different color. That indicates when it is completely changed over to straw. All right, there we go. You can see my grass turning into straw. It's changing colors into a tan color. And we'll be able to pick up the stack by clicking on it and then hitting the max button to indicate that we want to pick up all of it at once. So after this, the next task that you see on our task bar is to gather mud, sand, and then form a brick mold using boards. So what we're going to be doing basically is we're making bricks. We're mixing sand and mud and straw together on a brick mold and letting it dry out in the sun, in the hot Egyptian island sun. So in order to get mud and sand, we're just going to go run over to a lake. Now we're trying to make a certain amount of bricks and we're going to need a lot of sand and mud. All right, so you might not have enough inventory space because you might be very close to 500 bulk in weight. So we're going to skip ahead a step and we're going to actually do the project of building a flimsy brick mold. 
Now I'm going to pin this because I'm going to make quite a few brick molds in order to go through some of the boards that are in our inventory. So I'm actually going to build eight brick molds right away because the brick molds do fall apart after some use. Now you don't have to build this many by any means, but I like to try to make everything a little bit faster when I'm going through the tutorial island. So I'm going to do four uh, or sorry, eight at a time, which is going to get me about 50 bricks uh, per run or, or, or per uh, round of making bricks on these racks. So you'll notice that now we've freed up quite a bit of our inventory space because we've gone through quite a few boards. Let's go pick up some sand and mud. So we're going to pick up exactly what we need to fill our inventory up to 500. We'll probably need to go back and get more mud and sand later on because we have actually more straw than we need. But all we're going to do is click on the, frim uh, the flimsy brick mold and start making bricks. Now, if you saw the letter B there, that's the shortcut to make bricks. So you can move your mouse over the flimsy brick mold and you'll start to place down and kind of mix the mud, the sand, and the straw together. And then after a few minutes, your bricks will turn to a different color, a little bit more lighter cream color. And that indicates that your bricks have dried and boom, there you go. You've got your basic bricks ready to start making new objects. As you can see, we just got the bricks ready to go and now we got a pop-up about flax seeds. So flax seeds are going to let you grow flax. Now you'll also notice that our taskbar has been changed to new items. To pick up our bricks from the molds, we're going to use the T key, which is to take the item and kind of drag the mouse across all of the different brick molds in order to pick everything up. I'm going to make a couple more runs of bricks, but what we're going to do is skip ahead a little bit in order to unlock a building that I can start dumping some resources into. Because if we keep trying to get everything at once, it's like, for example, we keep trying to make more and more bricks, we're going to go over our weight limit. So I want to go ahead, I happen to know what's coming up in the task list. So we're going to make a couple of flax beds. We're going to grow some flax, and then we're going to skip ahead to another project so we can start putting our bricks into something. All right, so I've got about 100 bricks on my character. I'm going to let the current load of bricks kind of sit off to the side, and we're going to start planting some flax. In order to plant flax, you're going to click on your character, and you'll see a new option, which is plant. Now, you might want to adjust your camera in order to get a view that's comfortable. Now, when you click on flax, you'll notice that the flax seed option is there. And then Old Egypt is the style of seed that you're starting with. We're going to plant that flax seed down into a bed. You'll notice that this bed will go through some changes. The first thing that you're going to see is kind of a purple flower on top of a green stem. This is the first stage of growth in flax. Now, there are different strains of flax that will be developed in the game later on. Sometimes you'll have to do different things like water the plant or weed it. Right now, all we have to worry about is weeding. And when these little yellow weeds come up, if you want to uh, process the flax, you'll weed it by pressing W or you can click and weed the flax bed manually. But what we're going to do is get a couple of extra seeds. We're going to let this bed grow wild. So it's actually going to have a second phase where even more weeds come in. And then we're going to be able to click on the bed and gather more flax seeds. Normally you can do this about two to three times. And then if you wait too long, your bed will kind of, uh, kind of disappear and leave behind a single little bag with one flax seed in it. Generally, you want to make sure you have a couple of flax seeds on you at all times. You never really want to go completely run out of flax seeds. So I would encourage you, if you're about to do your flaxing, uh, normally people refer to as, as doing a flax run or something like that, or doing their flaxing, they'll try to do a lot of flax at one time. So you want to get yourself a good amount of seeds so you don't have to kind of stop every few minutes and let one bed grow wild. So while this one is going ahead, so while this flax bed is giving us some seeds, we're going to plant down two additional flax seed beds right next to each other and we're going to actually weed these in order to get some flax now i happen to know that two beds will get us the flax we need in order to skip a couple of steps in the task so we're going to only grow two beds right now as you can see the first step there the first stage in growth has appeared uh purple flower with the green stem we're waiting for that yellow weed to show up and as soon as it does we're going to click on the bed or press W while our mouse is hovering over the bed and that will weed it automatically. As you can see our character kind of reach forward. There's a bit of a circle that your character can reach without moving and as you play the game more and more you will be doing a lot of interactions with flax so you'll get much more comfortable with what that range is and how to how many flax beds you can manage 
at one time. So we're going to weed this old Egypt flax twice, and once it's done weeding, you'll have the option to harvest this flax bed. Excellent harvested flax, we can press W again if you want in order to harvest it. All right, we've got our flax in our inventory. Let's go over to the nearest body of water, and we're going to chuck that flax in the water in order to let it rot, which is the next step in our task list. You'll click on your character and hit skills, and then rot flax in water, and then you'll hit max in order to drop all of the flax in your inventory into the water. So, uh, and by the way, you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner, you're starting to learn different skills automatically. Now, this is actually a big change from the previous versions of the game. You're now able to learn things automatically, when what it used to have is you would go to a school and pay a tuition fee in order to kind of pay the uh, professors to teach you that certain skill. By the way, you'll also notice that there's different colors on these two buoys in the water. My buoy is red, which indicates that it is not rotted yet. That other buoy that's out in the pond is actually someone else's buoy. They've dropped the flax in the water in order to rot, and it's actually turned white on the flag. So you'll notice that it is ready to go. So we're going to hang out here, and just like watching grass dry, we're going to be watching flax rot. All right, our flag has turned white, so that means we've got some lovely rotten flax ready to get picked up. Click on it, and then get this rotten flax. Now, the next objective is to gather some thorns. We need about 60 thorns in order to make a flax comb. Now, I actually am going to struggle here a bit because I don't think we're near a place with thorny bushes. So keep an eye on your... You don't necessarily have to start near thorny bushes. Just realize at some point in your tutorial, you will want to find uh, somewhere with like a yucca plant, which it generally will look spiky. Aha! I see a thorny bush in the distance. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and, and gather all the thorns available here uh, from the pony sedge and from the lion's glass. So we'll grab the thorns. It's going to give you a random amount, I think anywhere between, I don't know what the lower amount is, but you can get quite a few at once. All right, so we were a little overweighted, so I did drop off a couple of items like our mud and our sand because we can always get extra of that. So I'm over 60 thorns. That's all we need in order to make our flax comb, which we're going to go back to our compound. All right, as we come back to base, I'm going to pick up this random little bag of seeds that I kind of forgot when I left, but we're going to build a flax comb by clicking on our character and going to projects and then flax related and then flax comb. So we'll build the flax comb in place. It's going to use up all those materials we gathered earlier. And now we have to process the rotten flax through the comb. So you can click on that and you'll notice under the talent tree or your stats screen, as you click on the different steps to process it, it starts to turn your endurance red. And after a certain point, you're not going to be able to do a task that uses endurance for 60 seconds. So a lot of different things will happen. You'll notice there that we were just gifted 50 rotten flax for completing flax processing. So we're kind of not quite cheating, but we're, we're getting a bit of a gift here from the game in order to move through a couple of steps easier. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build a small distaff. It's under flax related. Okay, so you'll see that we are short on bricks. We actually have the boards and the wood, but we don't have enough bricks. So I'm going to gather up that last bit uh, of those last bits of bricks there on the ground. And now... If we go back into our project menu, we're going to be able to build that distaff, which we're going to use to turn kind of the... Remember, we rotted the flax, we've processed the flax. All right, so we're just going to go through another cycle of processing flax into its different parts on the flax comb. Now, you might have to wait just a bit because your endurance is probably turning red. So you'll, if you try to process it on the comb and it tells you that you have to wait X amount of seconds, no problem, just give it a bit of time and you'll be able to go all the way through. What we're specifically looking for is we want to have at least 12 toe in order to do the next step. Once we have 12 toe, we're going to pick that out of the flax comb, and we're actually going to load it in the distaff by clicking load the distaff with toe after we click on the distaff. Once you load it with toe, you'll actually have to start spinning everything. In fact, this will take a little bit of time. In fact, I think I'm going to go out and grab a bite of food while this is running. So as we're waiting for this to process, one thing you might want to do if you've got the inventory space, I would recommend running around and getting a little bit extra wood because the wood on the trees will kind of respawn in a way faster on the island than it does in Egypt proper. So especially during the early game where you're going to need a lot of wood, it wouldn't hurt to, once we leave the island, have a good amount of wood 
on our character already. It'll save you just a little bit of time. And really, there is a bit of a land grab, especially early on in the tale. Now, if you're coming into the game a couple weeks later, don't fret about that. It's not like you're going to miss out on all of the best spots. There are so many places to build your own compound in the game. It is insane. The amount of space that is available is out of this world. And the world designers have gone to a lot of effort this telling in order to make some of the areas really, really unique. And they're actually called homestead. And homesteads have kind of a unique element. Normally, they'll have some kind of statue or kind of a, a shaped terrain in a way that just doesn't seem natural. They've kind of customized that in order to have a nice feel to your home. And I'll talk about finding a good location for your first homestead once we get into the game proper. But for now, realize that there might be a bit of a land grab if you're joining the game very, very close to launch. So having extra wood in your inventory might be very, very useful. Excellent. Our distaff has stopped moving, and that indicates that it has processed all of that tow into twine. And if we click on it here and take a look uh, at the take menu, you can see... Well, I didn't actually really need to grab that, but <laughs> if you notice there, the twine was sitting in the inventory of the distaff. All we have to do now is actually click on the start spinning twine into rope, and we are well on our way to the next project. So what I'm trying to do here is I want to get just the bare minimum in materials in order to make the project that will let us make a cart. So we need two rope in order to kickstart that project because if we're trying to pile everything in our cart we will actually run out of inventory space so I want to kind of start that cart project and that's why I'm kind of only doing a certain amount of processing early on we're trying to just get just the bare minimum to unlock the ability to make that cart project now a project is a bit different than say building a flax comb for example when you build the flax comb it just comes out and it's built when you have kind of a project you kind of start the project and then you're able to load items into the project. So let's wait until we have the rope that we need. So we have all the rope we need. It has been spun from twine. We can gather the rope, take everything with it, and we're gonna click on our character, go to projects, and then build a cart. Let's move the cart away from our body and everything else here. And then you'll see, this is the loading screen, the loading screen where we're able to dump a lot of our resources. So we don't have everything yet, we're short, on bricks for example but we can load everything that we do have so let's load in the boards the wood the rope the remainder of our bricks and it looks like we're short so we'll go grab some mud some sand and we'll, we'll come back to our brick rack and make some more brick all right so as you can notice here my brick racks are starting to fall apart but that's okay we have so many extra brick racks that it's not going to hurt us in the long run so we'll keep waiting for these bricks to finish we're looking for about 200 bricks. Remember, we that's how many we needed to load into the cart. All right, so we've got a ton of bricks on us right now. We had some bricks in the cart as well. So we're going to load everything up, and you'll see that the cart is ready to go. Now, first, we want to make sure we tear down. We don't want to leave too much of our junk behind. So we're going to clean up Egypt by clicking on our distaff, going to Utility, and then clicking Tear Down This Building, and you will get a confirmation about that. We can pick up some of the items that we used to build the distaff so we can get some of our parts back. Now, in the real game, in Egypt itself, there was a skill in the previous tales that determined how much of your original input into a building or an item you would get back if you tore it down. That may or may not still be in, in Tale 9, so keep that in mind. Don't, I just don't want to tell you to go tear something down when you might not get those resources back. But here we are, my friends. We are ready to depart on our new journey to Egypt. We're going to get confirmation. We're going to get a pop-up box about this is a one-way trip. Now, if you try to do this next step and the game kicks you back and tells you that you have so many of X, Y, or Z item allowed, you can just go ahead and drop those items and then try again. You will get a pop-up here telling you to select a faction. Now, this is a kind of a pretty big deal, um, and you can get more information about the different factions by going into the A Tale in the Desert Discord and joining those faction channels. Now, uh, generally speaking, Meshwesh happens to be Northern Egypt, Hyksos is Middle Egypt, and the Kush is the Southern part of the Nile. Highly recommend you go into the Discord to find out more information about the region. So you might wanna ask them, hey, who happens to be settling here? What time zone are people in? 
Uh, are there any Germans or French in the channel that can help me with language? But once we head over to Egypt, the game will load and poof, we are actually in Egypt proper. You will start seeing different tabs. Things will start exploding. Your character will get struck by lightning and you'll get a message about specializations. Again, we'll talk about specializations later on, but feel free to read that pop up. But your character will get zapped and you will become a new member of Egypt proper. Yeah. Exciting times ahead, my friends. You now have to go forth and find a guild or find a home. I will encourage you to check out the Discord. Uh, try to reach out to a group of people to find a community to play with. Guilds are an incredible resource in this game. But thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. I appreciate your time. I hope this was helpful. I look forward to seeing you again in more videos. But yeah, hit me up in Egypt, and I'll see you then.